Round 100 speedruns might be one of the craziest world record leaderboards on Call of Duty Zombies. These players are getting to round 100 in 4, 3, or even sometimes 2 hours. Playing these games unbelievably fast. A normal person would be getting to round 100 in maybe like 6 hours, or even like 7 hours on Kino de Toten. But the world record for Kino de Toten round 100 speedrun is like 2 hours and like 44 minutes or something like that. These speedruns are no joke. Even on a map like Moon, which is the fastest round 100 on Black Ops 3 is about 2 hours and 30 minutes. Now all of these times are super fast, but out of all these maps, what map has the slowest round 100 speedrun world record? Maps on the same game take only like 3 hours to get round 100. Nocturne Toten takes about 8 hours to get the world record on the round 100 speedrun. And today guys, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get this world record and what Tom Fantasy did in his game to get that world record. So unfortunately, Tom Fantasy actually doesn't have any footage of his early gameplay. Not only for the round 100 speedrun, for the round 70 speedrun and even his high round world record. So I actually have no footage of showing you guys what he did in the early rounds. Instead, I'm gonna show you the Spanish guy. He does basically the same setup and everything, just not as fast, but you're going to get the same gist of exactly what Tom Fantasy did just by watching this. So when you start any game on Nocturne Tone or even any speedrun on COD Zombies, you are going to instantly grab a raindrops and pop that as soon as you can. This is my 50 speedrun world record. It's not going to be the same exact game as the 100 star at all, but the early eight rounds are going to be the exact same. You are going to stay in this first room for a good amount of time because if you open any doors right now, that means there's going to be a lot more zombies that spawn on the other side of the map because Nocturne Tone is a really big map and people really don't realize that because the actual map itself that you can play in is very small but everything on the outside is humongous it's a really wide area and if you open one door that causes zombies to literally spawn from the exact opposite of the map you want to play as long as you can in this first room so you can be as fast as you possibly can for these early rounds in the 100 speed run whether that's just constantly cycling raindrops over and over and over again being fast is definitely key now the thing that obviously sucks about the speed run is of course getting that pack a punch thunder gun out of the box of course for the thunder speed run you are going to be using crate power and crate power is going to definitely help a lot for getting that setup you of course want to get the thunder gun a 100 percent and then also two good ars or smgs something like an rpk there you see it even grab it but something like that would be very good because you are going to want to use dead wire and turn for the speed run because just using a thunder gun is not going to be enough especially on nocturne tone where there's not a lot of zombies coming in all at once they're all coming in one by one by one so you are going to want to be using dead wire and turn and then once you get a good amount of zombies together then you can shoot a t-gun shot but it is definitely very key to have two good ars or smgs now the thing that makes this strategy very interesting is because you need to get this thunder gun out of the box but you need to do it while being fast we're watching this guy play right now and you'll see he's just hitting the box you know not nuking rounds this isn't really the most optimal way to do it of course you definitely want to keep killing zombies and nuking rounds while hitting the box but of course it is a hundred speed run so majority of the time being made will come in the later rounds but still your early rounds is gonna matter a lot but you'll notice he just keeps hitting and it's very hard to get the good thing about knocked on tone though is of course the box is never gonna move you won't have to worry about that also no fire sales as well so it's very good in that aspect you don't have to use a raindrops to get your crate power like on some other maps but you'll notice this guy is an hour into his game and he is on round 37 and just now he gets his thunder gun so even though the box has been in the same spot for the whole entire game it still took this guy 37 rounds to get his thunder gun now if this was the 100 speed run there would definitely be a restart before this i would definitely say getting your thunder gun in the first crate power would probably be a good restart that would be definitely something worth restarting for because getting that thunder gun instantly you need to get that as soon as you possibly can because if you don't get it as soon as you possibly can you're gonna be losing a lot of time this guy's on round 37 in one hour we can't see what tom fantasy's times are because of course he doesn't have the gameplay in his early rounds i can definitely assure you that it's not one hour to round 37 this is a big big reason you need to do restarts on speed runs because just waiting this long to your thunder gun is going to destroy the whole speed run no matter how long it is now to kind of help understand the early round strategies we're going to go back to my 50 speed run now i do have the help door closed and at this point you are going to have that help door open meaning not as many zombies will be spawning in the first room there'll be three barriers where the zombies spawn in from the help door but this is going to be a good example of actually what you're going to be doing in these early rounds on the 100 speed run you're going to be spamming raindrops and alchems as much as you possibly can nuking rounds at this point is gone obviously on maps like ascension and kino de 
Toten, you can almost nuke rounds up until round like 70. But on Nocturne Toten, you're gonna stop nuking rounds around like round 24, like 25. Because, like I said, the zombies are gonna spawn so far away from you that you can't even see them when they spawn. So when you're nuking the rounds, you can't even kill the zombies. They're gonna hit that spawn cap almost instantly on round like 25. It's gonna be very hard to nuke after that round. That's what it is very key to always have a insta kill or a fatal on you. That is why Raindrop's such a good gobble gum because you can pop a raindrop. Not only do you get a max ammo, but you get a death machine and an insta kill. You use your death machine by itself, and then once you see your insta kill flashing, then you go ahead and grab the insta kill and use that. And that's a good one minute worth of killing zombies. And then by that self, you already have your thunder gun. And then you can start spamming your thunder gun. But while you are earlier in these rounds, you want to focus more on using drops because using drops will be much faster than using your thunder gun. Now, another strategy which I don't think Tom Fantasy did, I obviously don't know because he doesn't have gameplay, is using fireworks in your early rounds. Now you'll notice I have fireworks on my Shiva right here. Now you don't need bed wire this early because considering you can just spam your thunder gun and that would just be much faster of course. But having a fireworks go off every so often even though you're just spamming your thunder gun and drops is going to be very helpful because fireworks has a very long range when you have it on the Shiva. If you have it on the RK5 it's going to be horrible. But right there you see I popped that fireworks right there. Every zombie in that area just dies to the fireworks. Now dead wire won't be really helpful until the 50s or even 60s i can't really be spamming my thunder gun over and over and over again but this is the other problem that comes with it is that you need to re-roll your dead wire now obviously getting an aat from bullet boost is very rng there's five aats if you have an aat on you that means there's four other ones you can get and you have two tries you have a 25 percent chance every single time you get a bullet boost to actually get one of those aats you don't want to have a bullet boost on you on round 50 plus you want a raindrop or an alchem on you if you're wasting your time you know using bullet boost to get back your dead wire after having fireworks you know that can lose you a lot of time but also it can save you a lot of time imagine you are on round 60 you're done using fireworks you're ready to use dead wire you grab a bullet boost and then boom instantly one shot you get dead wire back that helps you out so much you don't even have to worry or waste any time trying to get dead wire but then imagine if you keep going through bullet boost i've had it multiple times where i've had almost 10 bullet boosts not once did i get the aat i wanted it's definitely possible and it's definitely happened to me before but that's a definitely another rng aspect that will come in the speed run but it'll help you a lot now finally we get to go to tom's gameplay his gameplay starts on round 57 and you'll notice he does have that help door open and all he is doing right now is just training with his fireworks so i, I was right he actually does use fireworks i wasn't sure if he used it or not but he does use fireworks you see he's training with thunder gun a little bit and then when he there's a lot of zombies he'll shoot a thunder gun shot and every so often he'll also shoot his firework now this is a big timing game because you do need to track your gobble gum cycle if you don't know how to track gobble cycles i have a video in the description it'll show you how to track gobble gum cycles if you're not sure how it works but if you know you are guaranteed see right now he has a full raindrops on him that's two activations that's two max ammos two death machines two insta kills if you know you have a free hit right now on this round round 57 you have a zero dollar hit and it is guaranteed an alchem you need to get rid of this raindrops so what does that mean you need to shoot your thunder gun as much as you can get this raindrops out of the way shoot 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 now why you want to do this is because you don't want to waste your raindrops if you know you can get a free alchem at the end of this round why are you gonna, you know, save this raindrops to the end of the round? Use both of them, be fast, spam your ammo, waste it all, and then, then you start playing it slow, and then at the end of the round, you grab your and this goes the same for everything. Even if you have a shopping free, I would definitely say have your shopping free. If you have a guaranteed shopping free, I would definitely make sure to get rid of whatever gobble gum you have on you by that end of the round and then grab the shopping free. This is where like skill and knowledge comes in and honestly a lot of experience. Somebody like Tom Fantasy has been playing this map for a long, long time, meaning he can tell how long each round is going to be. So he knows how much he should be spamming if he wants to get rid of the raindrops by the end of the round and he knows how much he should be spamming if he doesn't want to get rid of the raindrops. He wants to save it until the next round because as we know we have a crate power and a bullet boost in our cycle which means you know you can be guaranteed a crate power and a bullet boost as your next two hits and you need to save your raindrops until the next two rounds meaning you're gonna have to play very slow there's a lot of experience and knowledge that comes into these speed runs and definitely trial and error you know playing it over and over again the more you play it the better you will get at it because you'll know how long these rounds are so now we're at round 68 and at this point he has a full outcome on him right now he'll be spamming a lot or he can be preserving ammo you know he might have a guaranteed crate power 
I have a guaranteed bullet boost next. This is the whole thing that comes out with this speed run. Because around like 68, you know, you might want to spam a lot. Or if you're on like 90s, you might want to save a lot of your ammo. Now you'll notice here he's on round 59 and he gets bullet boost. This is the point where he wants to switch from fireworks to deadwire. Now you'll see there first he gets fireworks turned and then he gets his fireworks to deadwire. That is insane RNG because you notice he was running double fireworks, one on his Weevil and one on his Shiva. The two things he needed were deadwire and turned and first two tries he was able to get deadwire and turned. That's very lucky. So I skipped a lot to round 96. You'll notice we're about seven and a half hours into the game now. You'll also notice he's shooting a lot less T-Gun and using a lot more deadwire. Now, like I said before, this is where the experience comes in. He knows how much Thunder Gun he needs to shoot to get by this round. Now, of course, that max ammo is going to help a lot, allowing him to get more ammo. He definitely wants to preserve this ammo as much as he can. Now, you see he has a full range drops, but obviously only Tom knows what gun is in the Gobble Gum cycle next. And another thing you'll notice as well is that he only has 343,000 points, meaning he cannot double hit because on 96, double Gobble Gum hit is about 512,000 points. So if he runs out of ammo at all, there's really nothing he can do. Now to end this round, you'll notice he ended up using one raindrops and he has about four eight left in his thunder gun. So he basically used half the ammo he has and he already used his free hit for this round. So what he is going to do is instead of hitting this gobble gun machine instantly at the beginning of this round, he's going to use his raindrops and then hit that gobble gun machine just so he can obviously use his raindrops to his best capacity. And if he has a possible shopping free, he might wait until towards the end of the round to grab that shopping free. Now the reason you do that is because a shopping free will give you three hits. It'll give you that free hit where you get the shopping free and then two extra hits and then that's it but if you get that shopping free towards the end of the round you can get that free hit two hits and then the round will end giving you three more hits so if you get very unlucky say and get a shopping free and then crate power bullet boost that shopping free literally gave you nothing you're gonna be at ground zero back where you started but if you have it at the end of the round you get three more hits but if you're really unlucky you can just get shopping free crate power bullet boost and then crate power bullet boost shopping free so you can still be at ground zero if you're really unlucky but that is very highly that does not happen and you'll see at the beginning of this round he does grab an alchem now he only has this round and next round left so if he has a guaranteed raindrops or maybe a guaranteed chopping free he can definitely use all this alchem this round and then just focus on the last round but of course it's all up to luck now you'll notice he starts this round with a full alchem and a full t-gun after he gets a max ammo of course at the beginning of this round and he still has his free hit after this alchem so depending on how lucky he gets he could use this alchem and then get a really good gobble gun you'll be noticing the trend here that Gobblegum RNG is a big factor in this speed run. Now you'll notice he ran out of his alchem. He goes ahead, hits the Gobblegum machine. It's a purple, which means it's good, and it is a raindrops. Him getting that raindrops right there is going to save him a lot of time, especially because he's going to be towards the end of the round, or at least halfway through the round, meaning he can use both these raindrops and spam a little more, more with his thunder gun. Now imagine if he didn't get those raindrops and he got a crate power instead. That would have lost him a lot of time compared to somebody else that didn't get that. That's why your late game is going to matter much more because right here this is equivalent to getting your thunder gun maybe like five minutes later just missing out on that one raindrops because you can't spam as much and you have to use more dead wire and use more turn it's also going to be much slower so you'll notice gobble gum rng is going to be a big big factor now before we look at what time tom finished with we're going to look at how long his round 99 was you'll see he started it at around 7 hours 57 and 50 seconds now we are going to go skip now we are here at the end of round 99 and you'll see his round 100 time is about 8 hours 10 minutes and 21 seconds so that was about 13 minutes, I believe, which is pretty long for a round 99. He did spam a lot on round 99, so it could have easily have been because of that as well. This game is insane, guys. If you guys want to see the gameplay, I'll make sure to link it down in the description. Make sure you guys go check out Tom. He's a fantastic zombies player. Everybody knows him for Nocturne Toten. Liking, subscribing is going to help more people get recommended to my channel, and it would help me a lot if you guys just did that. Other than that, guys, I appreciate you, and I'll see you later.